Hey guys, welcome to Epoxy Live at 5. I'm your host, Mike Quist. We have a great show in store for you tonight. We're an epoxy show that teaches you the tips, tools, and techniques of how to use stone coat countertop epoxy and make modern desks, countertops, floors, and more. Stay tuned. Visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Enjoy the video. Our epoxy rocks, stone coat countertops. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Hi guys, welcome here tonight. We're excited to help have you here. My name's Catherine. Mike and I are married. This is our business and we're here to invite you here tonight. Mike, you have quite a setup here and I'm excited to find out what we're going to do tonight. So I know you've been working hard. You and Mitch and Chris have been working behind the scenes. So tell us what we're going to get started with tonight. Yeah, what we've done is we've found some really cool pieces that were posted on our Insiders page. We were blown away because Lewis made a project that was his very first attempt with our products and he knocked it out of the park. It, this is actually the base that he used. He used a teal base. And what was really cool is I was in Texas with you this right. last week. We went to Rhonda's. Right. Did yeah. you have a blast there or what? Oh my gosh. So Rhonda does RK3 designs. She is amazing. One of my favorite people. And Bronson, we had Bronson there. We had a bunch of other fun people there that we met before and also that we got to know there. And we had a great time. It was such a fun experience. And we got you on a horse, which I didn't think was possible, but I was excited. I have some pictures that will be going up sometime, Mitch. I got some uh, pictures for you. <laughs> we'll get into that later. Uh, Rhonda actually had a really cool idea, and some of her base colors were painted with paint primer and one in a teal color. And I really haven't done that yet. I've all, only uh, really done the four colors, the Ethiopia, the natural gray, the Broadway, and the suede gray. Right. Now, we started with teal at Rhonda's, and we made some really amazing pieces. Well, you know this is my favorite color. So I was really excited totally, about that, right? right? Well, Christmas yeah. is coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> so anyways, we, as we were out there, we did get these pictures from Lewis, and we said, hey, man, we have to match what Lewis did. And we called up Lewis. Mitch, you want to talk about how that went, and then we got to show everybody what we did to prepare for tonight's live. Sure thing, Mike. Lewis, yeah, what a great guy. We noticed his picture on the Insiders. He sent us a couple of uh, pictures to our Gmail uh, and his phone number. I called him up in a real fast, asked him how he did it, and he laid it out. He did an excellent job. Check this out, guys. This was Lewis's first time ever using Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy, and this is the project that he did. We were absolutely impressed with his recipe and he shared his project on our Facebook group, Stone Coat Countertop Insiders. Many folks commented and were blown away. You can see all kinds of projects on that group every single day. Lewis gladly shared his step-by-step -step instructions of how to achieve this look. We posted those instructions on our website. You can just follow the link and we'll show you exactly how to achieve this recipe. Let's go pick up the supplies we need right now. Go real bright. Let's just get something that pops right there. That's a good one. So I'll just go get a quart. I just want a quart of this interior pink primer and one inside. Hammered bronze right here. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure it says it on the tag. Ocean mist and seaside. Yep. Okay, we got white, black, nutmeg, khaki, hammered bronze, warm caramel, ocean mist, and seaside. All right, is that it? That's it. So you can get a fine mist spray bottle or a heavy mist spray bottle. When you need hard and big droplets to create larger craters and bigger fracturing, this is the kind that we get right here. These Zep bottles work really well. Let's get two of them. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah. We have this old table work surface. It's made out of particle board, and we're going to turn it into a finished desk. 
How are we going to do that? We're going to follow Lewis's recipe. We fell in love with the look of his countertop, and we're going to replicate that same look on this piece of particle board. First thing we're going to do is remove the drips and, and, and epoxy dried chunks on here. We're going to sand that flush. We're going to bondle those edges because they're real porous. We're going to make them real smooth, and then we're going to apply two coats of paint and primer in one tinted in teal that we just picked up at Home Depot. Let's get started. Now it's time to prepare this top by removing all the junk on the surface and bondoing the edges so we get a nice smooth finish. We're going to use our normal all-purpose bondo putty. We'll mix that with the appropriate hardener. We'll mix it up thoroughly and we're ready to rock and roll. Pre-treating the edges of a porous substrate like particle board will set you up for success because your foundation will be smoother so you'll get better edges when you're all said and done. Don't worry, your Bondo work doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to come back and sand any high points after this sets up in about 25 minutes. Smoothing out a bullnose edge with a gloved hand really works well. Hey, got that all ready. We'll let that dry. We'll come back. We'll sand that flush. We'll sand the surface. You got a little bit of epoxy drips right here. Got some paint. We're just going to sand this flush and we'll start our teal painting right after that. Let that Bondo dry. We're going to let that dry and it'll crack right off of this, make it good as new. If you peel it all off right now, it's harder to get off in the end, actually. Grab this base. We got these workbenches off of Amazon. We'll put a link in the description below. We have a ton of them. We love them. They're sturdy as an ox. there. We'll sand this flush. We'll remove any epoxy drips and high points and then we'll finish this surface with 220 grit on our random orbital sander. We're going to sand the surface as well as those edges and be sure to knock down any 90 degree angle. We'll knock that down so you get a better roll on that epoxy and a better finish. Turn my speed down. Turning my speed down gives me better control on those bullnose front edges. Alright, we have a screw hole that's in the surface. We're going to use our 2P10 glue and accelerator to quickly overfill that and then we'll sand it flush. Let's get started. When filling a pit or a hole with 2P10 glue and accelerator, you'll want to do multiple passes. If I try to fill a deep hole all at once, it may not dry all the way in there. So just do it layer by layer. It's very easy. Our 2P10 glue sets up very fast. You can start sanding right away. That's ready now. That's nice and full. It literally took less than a minute to fill that sand it. Now we're ready to do our paint primer in one. Let's do it. I like a quarter inch nap, a nice tight nap on my weenie roller. Okay, we have a sample that we're gonna also prep so that we can try this on a small piece and then graduate to our big piece after we're done. We're gonna sand that with 220 grit right now. If you're wondering what color paint and primer in one we're using, we had this tinted in Island Aqua. Let's go to the islands. I love this color as our paint and primer in one color. I think this is going to turn out awesome. We'll let that dry and we'll come back and do our second coat in a few minutes. Hey guys, it's really good to run air across your surface if you want your paint and primer to dry really quickly. Let's shut this off and we're going to sand this and do our second coat right now. We're going to turn this nasty top into something beautiful. This is going to be awesome. Two thin coats is much better than one thick coat. Plus it dries a lot faster in the end. OK, 
Hey guys, every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, Stone Cold Countertops goes live, and we're going to show you exactly how we turn this particle board table into treasure. We'll see you then. I am sorry. <laughs> Mike, you had a really good time today. Yes, so yes. Like you had fun. <laughs> we have, we've had a hard, we've, we've worked our butts off for the last two months. I don't know if we've had a day off. We haven't. You know, we worked with Paul's Toolbox. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. We worked with Rhonda and Bronson. We did ATT's project, AD, AT Artist Till Death's project. Right? We did, we, we've been really working it. Yeah. And now we're about to have fun. I'm excited. Okay. So Not that we haven't been having fun. <laughs> we have. <laughs> So what we've done is we've mixed up some clear stone coat countertop epoxy and I want to say, Lewis, you crushed this. We hope to do it right right now. But one big key pro tip, you really don't want to take your recipe <coughs> and try to match it line for line, patch for patch. You really want to use it as a jumping off point. Absolutely. So when you do use it as a jumping off point, you can be free and loose with your color. Mm -hmm. You know that you're using the same colors, the same tools, the same techniques. You're going to get a different piece but it's going to be in the same family. Right. That's just exactly like natural stone. So don't be, as long as you're in the same recipe, go for it. It'll be great. All right. Okay, so Mike, where do you want to get started? What we're going to do is we're going to sand this with, sand the edges, sand the top lightly because we've got two coats on here. Right. And then we're going to make a sample first. Okay. The reason we make a sample? So that we know what to do with the big one. <laughs> so we got the big boy underneath here. So we're right. going to make the sample and then we're going to transfer what we learned on the little piece to the big piece. Okay, so you're gonna walk me through it today? You got it. You got it all prepped. Okay, so let's do that. So we just quickly do a quick sand. And it'll be easier on those edges if you take it off the tripod. Right, right. We'll just get it, quick do it. While, uh, while that video was playing, if you guys enjoy that, if that's helping you guys out, don't be shy of that like button. If we've earned that like, go ahead and hit that. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. We come every week with different videos teaching new techniques of how we do stone coat countertop epoxy, tips and tools and all these techniques come at you live on Mon on Tuesdays. Live we at five. New, we have new videos all throughout the week. Right. We have podcasts. Right. We really inform people how to use this product. Right. We really love teaching you and empowering you to create. I thought you were going to have any fog. Oh, I am. Good call. <laughs> we're live. That's we're okay. Live. Okay, let's do this. All right. Now we're going to fog. Let me, let me actually wipe that off. Okay. Good call. Sorry. I so just happened to Mitch, see our, tell our, us, uh, tell us the recipe that we should be following so I don't do that. Sure, yeah, I should have, I should have voiced up there. Sorry about that, guys. So we put together you, uh, for you guys a page here that, uh, it's going to show step-by-step -step everything you're going to need to, uh, handle this piece. So what Mike already took care of there on that video is he painted his board, uh, with his favorite shade of teal that he picked up there at the Home Depot. And now step two, Mike and Catherine fog the edges and surface with Rust-Oleum spray paints, gloss black, seaside, gloss white, and ocean mist. All right. That, uh, that, that cheat sheet or that PDF that we put together, that's going to really help folks out. That link is in our description. So if you want to see the step-by-step -step tutorial of how to recreate what we're about to do tonight, that'll live there permanently. Awesome. That'll be helpful. And be careful when you pop those off. You got to kind of wiggle it off or else you'll break the top, you know, oh. and then shake that up. All right. Did you do yours too and I'll do mine? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. You know what I did earlier today? What did you do? I shook four at a time. Oh, you're so much stronger than everyone. <laughs> Woo! All right. We spend so much of our time shaking cans up. <laughs> I know, right? right? So I would okay. start with your black because that's your loudest color. Okay. And then if it's too loud, you can kind of hide it. Right. And typically you'd want to do this before we're going to do the epoxy. Because you want to let it dry. So we'll go nice and mild knowing that we're not going to wait. Okay. Sounds good. I like that you're pre-moving that can too. Oops. I kind of went big. Sorry, Mike. It's all right. The epoxy is kind of grabbing where we had put it down. That's kind of what's happening there. Can I show you the edges here, honey? Sure. So I do the edges like that, okay? Yeah, go ahead for it. You want to do the rest of them for me? Because it's catching. There you go. All right, cool. Catch the fun one then? Yeah. Good? Yeah. We good? 
And there's really no mistakes. It's happy accidents. I would right. I'd be done with the black, though. All right, let's do some teal. Some, what's this one called? Ocean Mist. And then I'll kind of move in that white, because then I can use that, I think. And you, this is a little darker, too, so put those two on, and then... And I'm looking at that, and it looks like there's kind of a lot of both. And you want to make sure, see how you're stopping at the edge? You, when you do a stripe like that, carry it over that edge. Okay. And that'll look more natural when you're all finished up. And I like to put the caps on even when I'm working, because then you remember what color is what, but I never follow that rule after I get way into it. No, you don't. You know, You're that's not good. good that, but that's okay. I think I want to do some more of the white in there. I wouldn't do too much more because we've got quite a bit on there and we're going to hit it right away. Okay. Look how you covered a lot of that black. That's really good. Okay. Fog, fog a little bit more of this. Just see how we kind of got stripes. Yeah. We don't want to see stripage. Okay. Can I do a little bit of this mystic? Yep, I want totally. To break it up. Is that cool? Totally. You're right, I did kind of do stripes. So we'll kind of fix that. There you time. go. There we it's go. Perfect. All right. So we're going to do epoxy. We're ready for epoxy, Mitch? Wait. Let's check it out. Okay. Uh, one moment, sorry. All right, step three mix up three ounces of clear epoxy per square foot. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to apply with an eighth inch square notch trowel. Okay. Yes, we already mixed this while that video was going. And now we're going to apply this. Now, when you trowel this out, because this this paint is fresh, right? You got to be careful, right? I'm you, thinking you maybe we should try to chop it. What do you think? Oh uh, no! Actually, I'll just show you. I actually use this kind of as, as lubrication. Okay. And then I'll just okay carefully, and then we'll chop the rest like you said. Cool. Okay. Okay, you want to chop the rest of it out and just kind of paint those edges. Sure. And I already de-shed. Make sure that when you get a new brush, you just de-shed it really, really thoroughly so that way you don't have any surprises coming your way with any loose bristles. You always want to kind of keep your eyes out for that too, especially if you're going to choose to use... And when you, when you start, uh -huh. prime the brush or go yep. into your deepest area. Exactly. Yep. That actually looks cool where that black was and it's already melding the spray paint. Right, it's awesome. It's doing a good job. And because I'm chopping it, it's kind of breaking that up a little bit, encouraging that melting process. Okay. Now I do have more epoxy mixed up for the piece below us. So keep in mind, this is going and the time is clicking right now. So we're going to work and then we're going to use this. So we'll see if the working time still lives on when we get to that piece. Okay, It'll be Mike. a good test, right? Yeah, I think that'll be good. Do um, you want to tell me the next step, Mike? Uh, yeah, Mitch, what's the next step? You got it. All right, step four. Apply veining in the epoxy with Rust-Oleum spray paints, khaki, hammered bronze, cinnamon, white, warm caramel, and black. All right. So all those colors are right here, but a trick that I like, I like to um, put a little bit of spray paint in our clear that we have left over. Okay. We'll mix that up to kind of a... Uh, a more muted color okay because these veins are going to live underneath our prominent veins right and then i'll take the stick and i'll do random crisscrossies right and that's going to then tell us which ones we want to accentuate and make large okay and so uh if yeah you... it looks like he has a couple bigger veins in that style like yeah so yeah let's cool. uh let's spray some of this this is that hammered bronze should we make sure to shake that up I think so. Okay. You want me to shake the other ones? Yeah, go maybe? ahead. We're just making kind of a muted color here. There's some of that nutmeg. We'll put some of that cinnamon there. I think that's good. The custom color. Now, see how I just sl like slightly mixed that up? Right, because that's already kind of And then you're just going to take that stick and you want to keep your arm as straight as you can, just making crisscrossies. Okay. And try not to make man-made shapes like X's and things like that. Right, right. I got a good question, Mike. Yeah. Uh, Minkovich asks, can I use 99% alcohol instead of 91%? I can't find 91% anywhere. Uh, yeah, you can find 91% at Walgreens, CVS, Walmart. If you can't find it where you are, 99 will work. Just don't go lower than 91 uh, because you got too much water content. Good question. Yeah, he's up in Canada. That's oh, okay, okay. Yep. Can Canadians like it strong. See how this isn't going all the way over? Oh, nice, nice. Oh, you know what? I want to do this one that I kind of had a chance to do my bond again. Is that okay? Oh, totally. Now, which ones do you want to make more prominent? I think I like to make Can probably you? this one 
and this one more prominent. Can I make it a little bit thicker for let's, those couple? Let's do let's do a couple more just real fast so they're sure. not thick. Okay, just a little bit like Yeah, they'll be spider spider veins. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna hand that to you because you've got a you got my surgeon hand really quick. Right. So I wanna just let you kind of do that. Is that cool? There we go. Mike, you taught me such a good trick this last week. We were at the we're at Rhonda's and I think we'll have to break out that trick sometime. Why are you laughing at me, bro? <laughs> I don't know if you know you're making sound effects. I didn't know. No, that's I, awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I like it. I like it. It's, it's working. Fun. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Now, the more clear that you put here, the wider that vein's going to get. Right. That was one of my prominent. So I'm gonna, right. I know I'm going to drive some colors through. Yeah. Let's start with black and we'll work our way up. We'll do black and we'll just kind of work that. And you're not going to clean the paint stick off. No. Nope. Just put that through your prominence. Okay, great. And we can just kind of put it through just some of the accents. And yeah, be careful where you overspray that. Perfect. I like that you just sprayed that on one side of the paint stick. That's good. Nice. Nice. Now, we did a piece kind of like this at Rhonda's, too, with her um, one of her techniques, and that was so much fun. It was super fun. Now, what color is that? That's our cinnamon. That's our cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Start building. That's all I'm going to do is just start getting the Yes, work. totally. I'll get the next color ready for you. Right. You always want to make sure you're going down and around and kind of dropping it so that way it's getting that color all throughout the edge. And you don't have to use the same color throughout each of them. So if you see that you want to kind of add some of that color, maybe not quite as prominently in some of the other colors, you can do that too. Okay. What's your favorite color do you think that we did while we were at Rhonda's? Oh, goodness. She, did you know Every that piece. she went live there? Her her class was so much fun. It was. It was great. You got some flip colors for me? Oh, yeah. There you go. There's the next one. Okay. I like that you're not doing, you're not starting on the same vein, the same one each time either, which makes them all different, too. You, wanna, you don't want to super uniform. You want to do a little bit more. I'm sorry, honey. I can't hear you. Oh, I said you want to, you don't want them all uniform. You want them different than unique. We need a darker one. Yeah, we're gonna we'll end with white and black too. Okay, cool. Kind of bring all that out. All right. Oh, sometimes when I start working, I forget that I can't be heard, and I forget that I'm not talking very loud. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Sharon has a pretty good question here, Mike. If you want to handle it. Yeah. What is the difference in using Rust-Oleum paints? versus color pigments in the epoxy? Oh, good question. So the pigments, um, there's two types that we use. We use our metallic as well as our base color tints. The base color tints are gonna be opaque and they're gonna be a solid color. The metallics are gonna be more of a, of, of a metallic color. It's gonna be a highs and lows depending on how you chop it or move it. It can also be semi-transparent or translucent by adding just a little bit. Um, and then the spray paints are gonna be a totally different animal. They'll act and react with our base colors as well as the metallics to create natural cells and natural movement and all of these things work in conjunction with one another to create realistic looking stone art. Uh, woodworking projects will be filled with metallic sometimes. So really watching those videos that we put on and using these different techniques and, and products will show you in depth um, of how we do it. And, and also, if you had a particular question on wanting to see one, our customer service will point you to the exact video and actually the exact point in that video of something that you may want to see. All right. Can we get some black for the Oh yeah, right here. Get some black for them. We need some dark colors. Now what I like is we're going to finish up. Mitch, what's the next step after we create these veins? All right, let's pull it on up here. All right, after the veins are complete, you're going to use metallic powders from Stone Coat Countertops. Uh, copper and tropical turquoise mix those powders into 91 percent isopropyl alcohol shake well and mist the countertop right. now when we mist this countertop with our alcohol and metallic mixture it's going to light this sucker up it's gonna it's gonna give it um, r real cool reactions that are gonna fracture it and make this thing look realistic right now you can tell it's man-made right? right right and that's, that's okay uh, I think we should torch it first a little That's bit. That's what I was thinking to you. All right, you want I to like do that? the torch. You know how I like that so much. So, All right. All right. So I just think. Yeah, look at the way that melts together a little bit better. Nice.
Now, I'd like to make a suggestion. Go ahead. Um, I would take your paint stick mm -hmm. and get sloppy. So I would... Get more messy. Yeah, just move it like you don't care. Okay. Because like you're, you're care. trying to be too perfect. How about you You be more less perfect? Mike's got guts. Wave your hands in the air. Move that stick like you just don't care. Yeah, yes. That's a good idea. All right, now let's All put right. some more veins over that. Okay. So crisscross it again with these. Okay. Too thick? There you go. Like move that torch. Yes, sir. And then we can torch it one more time. No, let's uh, let's hit it with some alcohol. Okay. So when you do it, you want to check that spray. Okay. See how it's coming out nice and heavy. Okay. So this is our heavy mist spray bottle. Uh, if you used a light mist spray bottle, it's going to be a totally different reaction, right? Right. right. So light that up with some copper. Wow, that just brought that all to light. Keep a little bit. Well, I don't know. What do you think? You want to step back uh, and check it out? Yeah, let's do it with the teal first, and then we can always add there more. There you go. There's your teal. All right. You got to pull full strokes or else it won't actually get the metallic out. There you go. Nice. Oh, that's good tip, you know. Good pro tip, Mike. I like that copper a lot. Okay, good. You know, you know what I would have, what I would like to bring in. I know we didn't use it, but you know what I see a lot of is that clay. Do you think we could get the clay or no? Um, let's do no. The, the, they didn't use clay, but that cinnamon color is what. But I will oh, drag some yeah. black right through the top here. Okay. Here's. Here's Bring those veins that are prominent back up. I'm gonna break that surface section again too. So we've got an all going. Okay. With most of the other veins too? Did you do it? You know what I would do? Yeah. Let's bring let's bring this color back into it. Okay. These two. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? There you go. You want to put them in the veins or they're just around it? Right? I would put them in the veins, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then when I put those in, I like to uh, I like to put them all in the same place and then use the torch to pop them apart. Right. Okay. So maybe we could kind of start piling up that again and bring that vein back a little bit and then hit it with the torch. Sure. Are you suggesting? We're on the same page. Sure. Okay. I love these colors together. There you go. I'm just grab it and put it over the edge too. I love that color. That sea mist, I think, is what it's called. Because it's almost white, but not ocean mist. Ocean mist. Hey, Mitch, can you show me that picture again from the recipe? Yeah. I'm gonna just look at the packet. What's the spray color? One moment and coming up. There it is. Hmm. What's that? There it is. You seeing it? Oh yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Why don't we put some more cinnamon in it then? Let me put a bit of cinnamon in that. Oh, yeah, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Can I put some cinnamon in that sucker? Totally. I kind of asked permission and just went for it. So. <laughs> There's no permission. This is I your know, sample. Like, uh, I'm gonna do the big piece. So oh, this good. is this okay. is your sample. This is my playtime then. I don't have to fill. I'd, I'd cover a no little pressure. little black in there just yep. to make that look more real. Yeah, I was gonna hit with all with a torch in that. You know, I kind of did this a little more uniform. I, I like how those metallics are starting to fade out a little bit. Yeah. And that's one thing to keep in mind about the metallics is they'll float on the surface and kind of move out for you. Right. You know what I did that I didn't realize I was doing was kind of created this Stripe, bunch yeah. of stripes. Yeah, you and did. I didn't that's okay. That. That's all right. I kind of break it up a little bit. That's there. smart. Yeah. It's good. You don't want things to appear man-made, right? Right. Totally don't. Add some more of that color back into there. Created a whole new vein already. <laughs> Any questions, Mitch? I want to thank Val and uh, Sandy. They're answering questions today live. Um, appreciate that very much. If your question doesn't get answered, be sure to call us anytime for free project support, but we'll try to answer as many of them as we can and uh, just keep them coming. We appreciate that. Awesome. Okay, we're almost there. Sorry. We kind of got... Oh, that's looking cool. The whole thing with this is that you just don't stop until you're happy, right? You can keep playing with it for a long time. 
You have a lot of freedom with that. So I think I'm almost ready to pour this pepper and be done. Okay. Yeah. yeah, well, we got this cooking over here. Yep. Yeah. It's gel now. You're so <laughs> full of it. <laughs> You're killing me. So Mark asks, do you ship to the UK for a 50 square foot order? And yes, definitely, we ship to the UK directly from our website, or you can give us a call and we can help you with that order, 541-450-1976. And also there's another gentleman here who uh, is talking about his English is not being so well, so sir, if you would send us an email, we can translate that and, and communicate you just fine. No, go ahead. Just just push that out a little bit so it doesn't appear straight, and I think you'll like it. Oh, I like that. It's kind of going over into some of the fall action that I really like. Okay. So fly, uh, fly MGB1, Mike, you should be making one too. You look like you really want to. <laughs> Can you tell? He's it's coming so up hard next. For me to watch. <laughs> I, I totally need to learn to watch, and that's what I'm doing, my best. But I'm gonna have an opportunity as well. Yeah, yeah they they could tell. Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna just like stay back here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is looking good though. Very good. Torch. Torch. Move, uh, move the torch, Paul, please. Okay. Thank you. Heck yeah, buddy. All right. Okay. Oh, you know what I want to hit it with one more time? The metallic school. What do you think? Go for it. Okay. Another uh, viewer, Mike, wants to know the size of the sample board standing up behind you. I forget. Oh, those are seven foot by two foot. Great question. All right, I'm pretty happy with that, Mike. All right, cool. Well, what did we learn? What did we learn there uh, that we could transfer on to our next piece? What do you think? So, my strong suggestion that I learned while making this piece is to don't go with such uh, regimented lines. I loved using the so just like some of the pieces that he sent over, the heat gun was a great tool to use to kind of push some of those uh -huh. lines. I liked that. Um, and then don't be afraid to just keep working until you like it. I really like uh, I like this a little bit more that it doesn't look man-made. Right. No. I liked breaking totally that up. Yeah. Right. It kind of helped help. It gave it together. some of those. It gave it. I think we may have used a little bit too much metallic, uh, but you know I think I'll start a little less and see where it goes. Sounds good. Um, all right. I'm interested to see what you got. All right. Let's do this. Can I? Uh, can I move this out? Oh, let's it? make a spot for it. Let's make a spot right where. I'll I answer a question here real quick while you're doing that. Uh, Chaya, I see you are using a heat gun instead of a torch. Is there a reason? So there totally is reason. A torch is best used to remove air bubbles incorporated while you mix the uh, epoxy. And the heat gun does a great job of uh, moving the epoxy with that air. It gives you all sorts of different effects that the torch cannot do. So both tools are uh, good to have in your arsenal of epoxy. Yeah, the, one of the things that we use that heat gun for, too, is I didn't want to actually stand up, and so some of that might have been cool with a tilt, but with a lot of countertops, you guys don't have the opportunity to do that. So the heat gun is a great tool for that, so that's exactly what I'm Great questions, guys. All right. Let's All see. right, we've already sanded this down. It's already ready. We're now going to apply the clear epoxy. Okay. okay. Oh, Pre no, I'm not. <laughs> I was testing. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna fog that on, and I'm gonna use um, not quite too, not not quite as much uh, pre-fog. Okay. All right, you're using gloss black, yeah. gloss white, so, seaside, and ocean mist. Okay. 
here's some white, or no, this is the uh, ocean mist. It's almost a white against this deep. teal. I really like that color. Cheryl Ferry asks, or sorry if I, I hope I said your last name right there, is the teal and purple base coat for sale yet? And the answer is definitely. That is available on our website at stonecoatcountertops.com or give us a call. We can help you process that order over the phone. Cool, and then a little bit of white. Okay. Oh, your piece is level, laying out nice. Yeah, it looks great. Sometimes it's even an extra few minutes to kind of settle before you make decisions. It's great. Okay. But we're online. We have to go. <laughs> a little bit of black in here. What do you guys think, Mitch? Chris, what do you think? I'm liking it. All right. I give it a look. <laughs> Normally I would let that dry completely, um, but we're not. We're going to go live. Okay. Use my square notch trowel to carefully spread that. I'm having a good time. I love doing these lives. It's, it's a lot of fun. It really tests your skills too, right? I, I, I have to tell you it does because you we don't want this to be boring. We want it to be super interactive and we so we try to come as prepared as possible, but sometimes those steps, usually that we wait a little bit, you just gotta go for it. All right, Mike. So Mike, here's a good it. question for you about concrete garage floors. What should the moisture level be? It's a new home. You know, the way that we test moisture is we're gonna use a plastic bag, we're gonna, a piece of plastic, we're gonna tape it down, we're gonna wait 24 hours, we're going to come back and if there's any uh, darkness from moisture building up where that bag was, it's too wet. That's really a rudimentary way to test it and uh, that's how we've always tested it. Great question. Yeah. I think we actually go over that in our flooring videos too. Don't we? Yeah, we sure do. Yeah. You can check out those flooring videos on our, on our website as well. So and I'll we'll handle step the, by step through that. I'll handle this question from Justin. Are all the spray paints gloss? And no, we like the gloss spray paints, but uh, others are compatible. The satin needs to be shaken up uh, very well. And sometimes the satin likes to float on top of the surface. Just use your paint stick to incorporate that into the epoxy. It works great. Just shake it uh, very well before using. Catherine, you, you want to start? Chop? Yeah, you want to start <laughs> chopping? I can do that. Man, the way this is setting up over here looks really good. Yeah, we'll I'm show really, that. I'm really, really happy with the way that that's starting to look. We'll show that before we sign off. But now we're going to learn kind of what we learn. I, I'm really excited to show, you know, this This was a beat-up workbench, and we're going to turn it into a fancy desk. I'm I'll go over there and do the front edge. All right. Oh, that's looking beautiful. You definitely don't want to go in lines. You want to do kind of a random chopping pattern. And by chopping, we actually really want you to do that. Uh, you usually use the back heel of the brush. Let me see if I can get Mike not in the picture. Um, heel of the brush, and you just kind of go up and down in a random pattern. It's the best way to do that. Guys, we, oh, go ahead. Uh, we've got some really neat pictures on our insiders group. Uh, we appreciate all of those pictures. Uh, we learn a lot by just seeing what you guys make and what you need and anything we can help with. So we appreciate your questions. We appreciate the photos. And uh, we, uh, we try to get to those as soon as we possibly can. So thanks for your patience on all that. And again, thank you for participating and sending in your uh, works of art, your functional art, right? Uh, and I love that they support one another on that form. That's like a really exciting place to be able to show off and showcase your, your, your stuff. All right, Jessica has a question here. Uh, why are they chopping with the brush? So that does a couple things. It mixes the epoxy on the surface one more time. And we've gauged the amount of epoxy used with that eighth inch notch trowel. And that chopping action will eliminate it a little subtle, subtle iridescent lines left behind by that notch trowel. So that mixes the epoxy one more time, gets rid of those trowel marks, and uh, can add some pretty cool effects in the epoxy as well.
important to note that our epoxy sat there while we made our sample. Totally. Typically, you wouldn't want to mix that much up. You'd want to mix it in two separate batches. But if you work fast, you got plenty of working time even letting it sit like that. I still have this mixture mixed up that we did of the pre veins. Okay. So I'm going to do that. So I go all the way off the piece each time. Sure. That's great. Just random, right? Right. And a lot of these won't show through all that much. Yeah, they'll be more of a whisper, which is kind of neat too. So Mitch, we, uh, yeah. How, how are we doing on the recipe? You're getting there, let's pull it up. You're starting on the, you've applied that clear epoxy and you're building your veins. And I like it. Okay, so far, so good. I'm gonna now know, I'm gonna put a real random vein or a bigger vein right here. So I'm gonna pour some more epoxy right here. And then I'm gonna do another vein coming off of this right here. Okay. Um, go like that. Okay. And I'm not gonna keep it real perfect. All right. And then I'm gonna go Maybe another one, like right here. Okay, uh, that's too uniform. That's too uniform. So I'll do those two and then we'll build from there. Okay. So if you just want to start handing me color. That's black. Do you want white? I've got a good question here. I haven't opened my epoxy. Does it give off a strong odor? Uh, the answer is no. This is a VOC-free epoxy. It can be used in, in right in your living room if you wish. It does not have a smell at all. It's actually nice. Here's white. Get those sprayed out nice. I never get sick of this. That's good because that's what we need is for you to create. <laughs> that looks beautiful. Just be random with your movements. Don't be stressed out here. Okay. Hammered color. Hammered. Now I really want some of that cinnamon. I think okay. that's gonna give it that reddish hue that kinda can look like a little bit of copper. So when we hit that copper over it, it's gonna really make it come to life. All right. this vein kind of wander a little bit. I don't want too much perfection in these. I really like the cinnamon and that teal together. Yes. That really is beautiful. Get kind of free and loose with it so right. I'm not... Right. Right? Totally. Okay, here's the nutmeg. Oh, sorry. It's all good. <laughs> Bring some of this color throughout. Neither one of us are used to sitting with our sitting on our hands. No, we're not. So it's not not me. We usually create as a team, so we'll come up with a recipe and both of us are busy at the same time. So. And see, going with the uh, the metallics last really gives you a lot of freedom to make a mess, knowing. You're gonna fracture the heck out of it with it the metal. Doesn't matter, right? It's awesome. All right, here's the khaki. All right. And and I'm, gonna, oh. I'm gonna finish with some more black. Here's that warm caramel. It's Let's, a little bit different. You're awful quiet over there, Mitch. Mitch is reading. I'm, I'm mesmerized. Sorry. <laughs> that can happen watching this. Right. <laughs> What's he going to do next? There's a question for you, Mike. Uh, 
Christy asks, can you tint the quick coat with your base tint? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, we do not recommend using the quick coat as a top coat or a final product. It's going to amber and patina and yellow on you because it's not meant for UV. We designed it as a glue to adhere MDF together. It is very fast drying. Do not make that your top finished surface. Um, but yes, you can tint it and then it will uh, hide the fact that it's yellowing. So that's what we would suggest doing with that. Good question. All right, I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna fog just a touch of these colors here. Okay, sounds good. Just to incorporate some of those a little okay. bit more. These are just those blues. Right. Well, that'll be really good when you go to, to use them. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think that's a good, a good call. We're gonna layer those metallics. All right. I'll address my front edges. Okay. And then we'll uh, probably bring those veins back up through. Sounds good. So I'm gonna hit it with that copper right now. All right. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna hit it with some of this teal. I like how the streams are different too. That helps kind of create some different looks and effects as well. That's neat. And then I'm gonna put a finer mist on this copper and just add a little bit more. Okay. I said don't add as much copper, but I like it. I know, right? It's hard not to. Cool, and then I'll... Now I'm just going to bring in these veins again. Put that black. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Boston has asked a couple times here, so I better answer. Is there <laughs> a video on the purple marble one the purple marbled board behind you, uh, the one that Catherine is standing in front of, and yeah, that's coming up here shortly, so stay tuned. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and it's coming shortly. Oh, no, this purple video, this one. It's up already? We did two lives ago. Mm -hmm. That's up with ago. ATD. That's up with ATDs. Yeah. No, no, yeah, ATD didn't, it was the night before they came. We did this live. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. So Sorry about already, that. That's already posted. Check out the YouTube channel. It's uh, on our live a uh, couple lives ago. Well, that looks really good. Pulling those up and through now. That's yeah, just adding good. a little black just to that, Just a little right? bit. I think that'll be cool when you use that to move, too. That'll just bring back that subtle. That's great, Mike. Really interesting undertone. Rosie asks, can the epoxy uh, be delivered to Canada or is only in the United States? And the answer to that is we ship to Canada on a daily basis. So you can order right from our website or over the phone. Good call on doing this over teal. Right? Lewis, this is awesome, man. Can't yeah. believe this was your first attempt. You went big, my friends. Good work. It's beautiful. All right. I need to go this one. I'm going to blow those out a little bit. Yeah. With you the want heat. to use the heat gun? Or do you want to do the torch? I'm probably going to do the torch to start just to see what I can do. Teresa asks, can this be viewed on YouTube later? So yes, every one of our YouTube lives uh, is posted after the live and can be watched at any time, uh, downloaded or whatever you'd want. Well, that makes it look really cool. It, it tones it down a hair, but really makes it look organic. So you can't see where it crossed and that kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. It erases any man-madeness that you got. Look at how it fractures that paint open.
That's neat. Oh, that's really pretty. I like how it's pointing it down a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. It's kind of neat how the color folds over itself to incorporate each, each of that. That's beautiful. The heat gun's a little slower, but even on a big piece, it works, you know? Really well, yeah. Oh, that looks wonderful. Mm -hmm. I am having a blast right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. See, I know when you say all right like that, that means you want me to stop. No. It might be where I would stop, but that knows that. I'm just looking at our pieces together, and I'm going to say, they look pretty close. I mean, there are definitely parts that look just, you can tell it's the same recipe and color family. So see these pits right here? Uh-huh. So I'm just going to tap those. Okay. So we get some more color in them. All right. I'm going to go through and just, uh, anything that looks man-made to me, see this circle right here? Mm -hmm. I'm going to just tap that. Tap some of these. Golly, I'm really, I'm really liking it. It's looking good. Can I, can I, only one thing I would do a little bit more. What's that? I think I would. I know that you said not as much copper, but I think I'd spray a little more copper on it now that it's kind of set up a little you know bit. What? I mean, especially you, look at our sample. Yeah, but I don't know. I like more of that blue showing through. You know what I, I might like to add? What? Let's get some fine mist gold. Okay. And I'll just hog a little bit of gold. We'll be breaking that recipe. Oh, sorry, honey. We'll be breaking that recipe, but we'll be uh, making it our own, right? right? And that's okay to do. Um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a little bit more... Um, of our scrap here, and I'm going to tint it a lot darker to put some darker yeah. spider veins. Yeah, they kind of got some blacker spider veins going on here and there. All right, let's do that. You agree with that, Mitch? Yeah. All right, All right here we go. Too, Mike. Okay, you got the fine. No, uh, do we have any of our real fine mist bottles like these? The tiny ones? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you want what size small. Okay, so I'm going to mix up some black spider veins. Okay, here we go. And I got a lot of movement running this direction, so I'm going to fight that movement a little bit, just come back across it. Oh, that's cool. That That's really cool. I know you said uh, gold, but I really like the rust too. <laughs> so I brought them both, just in case you want to do both. Boy, that looks awesome. Oh, I like that so much. Some of those black really pop. I love that black. That mm -hmm. looks great. I'm going to make an, like a V right here. Catch okay. that. Okay. Check it. Nice. Okay. I mm. like that so much. That looks great, Mike. Nice. Okay. Love I'm going to it with a little bit of gold. Okay. That's right here. Just a touch. Just give it some more visual interest over some of this. I think that's awesome. Oh, look at, nice. look at what that does. It yep. catches the light in little spots. That's why I like the fine mist. It doesn't fracture all that much. No. Oh, that's beautiful. But it adds some I'm really, <laughs> I'm really glad we did that. 
You got clay. You want me to use clay real bad, don't you? I really you? do. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I, I was thinking oh. like just in a couple spots. Maybe where the veins get together. I, so clay is like the unsung hero of all of the metallics. It's my favorite one. A little goes a ton. I'm not liking it. I'm done. Oh, I'm, I'm going to put it on my clay. <laughs> you don't love it? Uh-uh. It's okay. Uh-uh. That's okay. Nope. I do. I love it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put a little bit more black stripes over there just to hide some of that. That's all right. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yeah. All right. Pretty. Any other colors? You got any purple? Totally yeah. kidding. Totally I'm kidding. Like, okay. <laughs> Totally going off script tonight on live <laughs> five. All right, so I'm just gonna go through here and uh, pop any any little dots here. Okay. And then uh, I got some exciting news. Okay. Exciting news. Yes. Is this news to me too? Mitch. Yeah. Why don't you talk to uh, Lewis right now? You got it. So Lewis, thank you for all the information you shared. That's the picture I saw uh, scrolling through Stone Coat Countertop Insiders, and I was blown away. That's your first attempt. You knocked it out of the park. Thank you for sharing this picture with us. Your first attempt, 423 likes on the Insiders, man. You, uh, you impressed us all. Keep up the good work. Keep sharing that. Louis Janney, Stone Coat Countertop Insiders, you got this. You get the You Got This Award this week. Uh, we already have your address, so we'll get your package sent out tomorrow with that medal. We appreciate all you do for us. Good job. You got your good, you got this. Let's show your piece. Okay. I really like how this is laid out. Mitch, where do you want this? Uh, B-roll. Okay. So right there, Ooh, that looks so beautiful. Dang, yeah, that does. That is gorgeous. It really came out. Uh, what do you think I need, Mitch? Should I ask them, should I keep moving it, guys? What do you think? I'm going to torch it a little bit more. I'm going to move these. These are too straight for me. Mm -hmm. It looks too man-made to me. You need the same thing. Maybe you were too, Chris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's looking more organic. I like it better. So one of the things that I always want to mention is when you are using the metallics in the torch, you wait for the metallics to dissipate. So we had sprayed those metallics and then we let them sit for a few minutes and then Mike was able to hit it with the torch. If you go too fast, it will, it, you saw there was a little bit where he had done the, the 
clay and it will light. So just be mindful of that. And then you can definitely get your best results. Yeah. All right, I'm just making that run over that front edge. I, I looked at the front. It looks good. Sweet. Looks beautiful. I think you did a great job. Did you have fun? I did. I think it looks good. I think we did a good job. Yeah, it's 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 a unique. If I do piece. say so myself, sorry. Yeah, about that. I, I what think. What do you guys think? <laughs> you can see he used those vessel sinks, and those vessel sinks would make this thing just really Amazing. rock and roll. They're like a copper metallic sink. Hey guys, let us know. Do you think we should keep working on it, or should we call it quits? Some are asking for heat guns. Some are saying tilt. I'm afraid if we tilt it, you, well, I don't know. I mean, let's. I don't know. We can try. That's sliding a little bit. Yeah, that's going. Cool. It's actually really cool. Good call on the tilt. Okay. Do we need it on the front, just in case? I don't know. I like that. I like that. I man. like what that just did. Yeah, I really like that. I it think I'm gonna good. leave it kind of stacked right there. Mm, yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, good that call. That tilt was easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right. You know, I think I'm gonna call that one good. I like it. I never know when to quit, honey. And you do a good job. So. Hey guys, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, we really appreciate all the support that we get. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Catherine, you have anything to say before we sign off? I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for supporting us, for being here, for making sure that you call and get the questions or the answers to the questions that you need. We love um, our Facebook groups and all of our other social media platforms. We appreciate you. Um, we look forward to reading that. What's your favorite part of our, our Facebook Insiders group, Mike? No, you know what I wanted to say is I wanted to give a big shout out to our team. Uh, we have the best team ever. We I do. want to say thank you to all of our team here at Stone Coat Countertops. I want to say thank you to you for putting up with me and everything that I do. And I want to say a big thank you to Chris and Mitch. You guys are amazing. Thank you for everything that you do to make this show and make this company run. You know who I want to say thank you to? We always don't say it shout out. So I want to give a huge shout out to our shipping team. Yes. We have an amazing shipping team. They work so hard. They do a great job. We hope they work really hard to get you guys the products that you order right away in the best condition possible. And we are super grateful for them. So thank you to our shipping team. They're going to be appreciative of getting their shout out because sometimes we just, unfortunately, our our customer service team, we are always talking about, people love to talk about our customer service team, so give them some love too in the comments below. If you've gotten some good product, let them know how much you appreciate them. Hey guys, you're gonna wanna make sure to stay at the end. We have a text that you can send and you could join our mailing list to get all the updates of when we're going live, when we have new videos, when we have promotional uh, contests, anything of that nature, be sure to text that number if you haven't already subscribed. Mitch, do you have anything to say before we sign out? Sure, guys, if we didn't get to your question, because uh, they come flying up pretty fast, give us a call tomorrow, shoot us an email, 541-450-1976 or stonecoatcountertops at gmail.com. We'll be more than happy to help answer those questions. Hey, guys, visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. Call anytime for free project support. And until next time, from Stone Coat Countertops, you, you got, got this. this. We'll see you on the next video. Good job. That was a good one. Yeah, this is good. That is pretty.